Welcome to this NPTEL course on Dynamics and Control of Mechanical Systems. My name is Ashitava Ghoshal. I am a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and in the Center for Product Design and Manufacturing and Robert Bosch Center for Cyber Physical Systems, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. In this course, we will start with the representation of rigid bodies in 3D space. Okay, so the last topic this week is what is called as homogeneous transformation. So homogeneous transformation as it names implies, it is a combined translation and orientation of a rigid body. So we have this reference coordinate system X, A, Y, A, Z, A, which is origin O, A, and we have a rigid body but this rigid body origin is not at OA. It has gone to some another point which is located by this vector AOB. Okay. So as you can see that there is XB, YB, ZB is different from XA, YA, ZA as well as the origin has gone from OA to OB. Okay. And in this figure, I am showing you a point on this rigid body which is given in the B coordinate system by BP. So we'll see later how we can express this vector in the A coordinate system. So A and B are not coincident. Orientation of B with respect to A is again the familiar rotation matrix ABR. We can write this vector to this point on the rigid body from the fixed coordinate system OA this vector AP can be written as AOB plus this. But then if you want to add these two vectors, you have to make sure they are in the same coordinate system. So AOB and BP should be in the same coordinate system. We can do that by pre-multiplying BP by this rotation matrix. So again, if you think a little bit or in your mind, you can see that this B and B cancels and you are left with AP. So now we can add these two vectors and we can get this vector. So this nothing but vector addition, but vector addition where the vectors are in the same coordinate system. And this AOB locates the origin of the rigid body with respect to the fixed coordinate system or the reference coordinate system. Uh, we want to represent the combined rotation and translation of a rigid body in 3D space. So in order to do that, we define a new quantity, which is A capital P, which is nothing but A small p, which is the position vector of a point in A, F, A coordinate system. We add a one to it. So hence, this A capital P is now a four by one vector. So there are four elements. Likewise, we do that for B capital P. So we have a vector P in the B coordinate system, we add a 1 to it and then hence this A capital P and B capital P are vectors with four elements. Okay, The last element is 1. These are called homogeneous coordinates. So we can rewrite this vector equation which is A capital small p is equal to the vector locating the origin of the B coordinate system, then some rotation matrix times the vector in the B coordinate system. Okay, We add one more equation which is 1 equals 1. So now we can write, so this can, we can write these three equations and this one equation which is evidently true in this form. So we have A capital P which is now a matrix which is a 4 by 4 matrix. The top 3 by 3 is a rotation matrix. Then this is a column vector, which is AOB. And the last row is 0, 0, 0, 1 into B capital P. So we are going to write this 4 by 4 matrix as ABT. Okay? So you can clearly see that A capital P will be equal to ABT into B capital P. If you expand it, you will get this equation and 1 equals 1. So ABT 
is the 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix. In computer graphics and computer vision, the last row is not 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, if you want to show perspective and scaling, then we need to change this last row into some other numbers. This is a very, very useful way of representing combined translation and orientation of a rigid body in 3D space. As I said, the upper 3 by 3 matrix here, which is ABR, represents rotation. So if this matrix is a pure is an identity matrix, then this 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix represents pure translation. Similarly, if this last column vector, which is AOB with 1, is 0, 0, 0, and then 1, then this represents pure rotation. So this 4 by 4 transformation matrix can represent all aspects of rotation as well as translation of a rigid body in 3D space. There are some nice interesting properties of this homogeneous transformation matrix. For example, the inverse, I don't have to do an inverse of 4 by 4 matrices. So the rotation part is transpose, and the translation part is this transpose into AOB with a minus sign. Likewise, if you have two successive transformations, A to B1 and B1 to B, then the product AB1 into B1B gives the resultant transformation matrix. And the resultant transformation matrix can again have nice simple closed forms expressions. The rotation part is A, B1 into B1, B, it's exactly similar to rotation, two successive rotations. And the translation is again addition of two vectors as long as you make sure that they are in the same coordinate system. Okay, so pre multiplying by this rotation matrix brings this B1, OB to the A coordinate system. And likewise, if you have n successive transformations, then you can just multiply all these transformation matrices. So here is an example of a 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix, again obtained using MATLAB, and this example of the dice. So we have this initial configuration, which is here. Okay, you can see it is at 0, 0, 0. Okay. It's a, at this point. So not only the origin has gone from here to somewhere, some other place, but there is also rotation. And it's again the same die. So it's 1, 5, 4, and then this 1, 5, and 3, and then something is visible here. So we are not seeing this 4 anymore, face with the 4. So for this example, I can find the homogeneous transformation matrix and it looks like this. So as you can see, we have gone from 0, 0, I think it is uh, some other number, Z coordinate. So it has gone to minus 1, minus 2, and 1. And the rotation matrix, top 3 by 3 rotation matrix is given in this form. So this is a video of the combined rotation and translation of this dice. So it is a rotation about 1, 1, minus 2 vector by 90 degrees. Okay, so you have to make it as a unit vector. And translation by 1, minus 1, minus 2, 1. Okay, so initially it is at this location. Okay, it's at 0, 0, 0. And then it is going to some making these two, one rotation and one translation. So you can see this video. Okay, it ends up at the place where we really want it to be. 
and this rotation matrix is given by this. So uh, just a quick thing about some advanced topics in kinematics. There are things called screws, twists, wrenches, and so on. It is based on this very famous theorem called Chassel's theorem, which was given in 1830. It is sometimes also called mozi chassel's theorem. So what it states is, that the most general rigid body displacement can be produced by a translation along a line. It is called the screw axis or the Mosey axis, followed or preceded by a rotation about an axis parallel to the line. So I have this dice and I want to take it here. So according to this theorem, what it says is this is can be done by rotation about one line, which is this line, which is called the screw axis, then rotation by an angle phi and translation along this line by D. Okay, So a line in 3D space has four parameters. So if you want to locate this line in X, Y, Z, you need four parameters. So if you think a little bit, so you can have Y equals M1 X plus C1 and z equals m2 x plus c2 so m1 m2 c1 c2 there are four parameters okay a more formal way of saying it a line in 3d space can be given by an unit vector ak so there are two parameters here and a moment of this unit vectors about this origin which is ay dot k okay and ay is any point on this line so ak and ay dot cross AK, there are four parameters. Okay, and the line has four parameters, but as I said, this general displacement consists of not only this line in 3D space, but a rotation about this line and a translation about this line. So you have four plus then D and then phi, so these are six parameters. So recall that general rotation plus translation of a rigid body can be given by three parameters from the rotation and three from the translation. So there are a total of six parameters. And in this representation also there are six parameters. Okay, So four from the line and D and phi. In kinematics, we also have linear and angular velocity vectors. They can be also represented by these lines and this rotations you know about this line and translation about this line so these are called twists and then we don't want to get into it now but the if you ever want to do some advanced kinematics you need to worry about these screws twists and lines and so on so a very quick recap of this homogeneous transformation matrix. So you have a rotation part and you have a translation part and the last row is 0, 0, 0, 0001. So similar to the rotation matrix, we can try and see what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this transformation matrix. So it turns out they are 1, 1 and e to the power plus minus i phi. So phi is same as what we obtained from the rotation matrix. So there are four eigenvalues two of these are repeated, they are plus one and plus one. But the really interesting part of this is there are no two real eigenvectors. There is exactly one real eigenvector corresponding to one. Okay, so although there is a multiplicity of two for the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors are still, there is still only one. There is no other eigenvector. Okay, so this transformation matrix consisting of rotation and translation represents a general motion of a rigid body in 3D space. So there are six independent parameters here and they are sort of related to the screw. Okay, screw means a line and then there are these D and phi. And here also there are three rotations and three translations. So how are they related? You can show that the screw axis is same as the 
obtained from the rotation matrix. So this is the axis about which it rotates. The location of the line can be given in terms of this axis of rotation and a point along the line about which it rotates where this AY which locates the screw axis is given in terms of identity matrix, transformation, rotation matrix and transpose, the linear translation and then 2 into 1 minus cos phi. Okay, so this is a formula which was derived some time back and hence given the rotation matrix I can find out K just by the eigenvalue of the rotation part. Given this translation AOB, so basically given AB transpose, I can find K and this location of this line in 3D space. Okay, I can find out phi again from the rotation matrix. Remember, one of two of the eigenvalues were e to the power plus minus i phi. And we can find the translation of the line by taking this dot product AOB dot K. So this is one parameter, this is one parameter, there are four here and hence it is six and this is consistent with three from the rotation and three from the translation. So this is a simple numerical example. So again the same example which we did before. So if the trans transformation matrix is given in this form, okay, then the rotation matrix is this, the translation is this, and we can calculate k from the eigenvalue and eigenvector corresponding to 1. And then this is the angle which is minus pi by 2. The location of the screw axis is given by this formula which is given by this. And the translation along is given by this AOB dot k. So again, the basic idea is that if I give you a 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix, I can find out what is the translation along the screw axis and what is the rotation about the screw axis. So in summary, we represent a rigid body in 3D space. First we represent, a, first we need a right-handed coordinate system consisting of x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, and an origin. A rigid body in 3D space has six degrees of freedom with respect to another rigid body, three for position and three for orientation. And the rigid body B is basically identical to a coordinate system B. Okay, so remember in kinematics, we are not really interested in the shape the size or the mass and inertia of the rigid body. So in some sense, a rigid body was very similar, conceptually similar to a coordinate system. So we were attaching a rigid coordinate system B to the rigid body B and continuing onwards. The position of a rigid body is basically a position of a point of interest on the rigid body with respect to the reference coordinate system A. So most of the time we will use these three Cartesian coordinates, P, X, P, Y, P, Z. The orientation can be described in many ways. The natural first simplest way is this three by three rotation matrix, A, B, R. Then we, then I showed you that you can derive an angle and an axis form. Then we can describe by three Euler angles. And then we can have this four uh, Euler parameters and quaternions. And most importantly, we can go from any one to another one and vice versa. Then we had this 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix and ABT represents position and orientation in a compact manner. And these properties of ABT can be related to a screw. Okay, so with that, we stop.